The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Monday, February 6th. And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this wonderful and amazing Monday? We've got current news from around the world, the Sunday message word study, and of course, 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan from San Francisco. All right, everyone, how are you doing? How was your weekend, everyone? I hope you guys really had a, an amazing weekend, enjoyed all the things you need to do, got your rest, refreshment, get the fire back from the from the Sunday message. But it's Monday again. We can restart another amazing week together with the Lord. So uh, super grateful, thankful for all, for all of you out there starting your day with the Morning Star Drive. Uh, just really, just when I think about how far we've come, almost hitting three years. So in about a month and a half will be three years of this podcast. We're over 750 episodes in and you guys have been the best. I love how you guys are always contributing. You guys are contributing to the community, building this community together. And it makes me really, really happy that uh, we've, you know, that we've been able to build this much. We're only, I think we're like four away from uh, getting a thousand subscribers. So I'm super happy about that also. And and thinking about what's a new way that we can make this uh, program happen too. All right. So uh, this week's Sunday message, is the title is Relationships. And, and uh, this is kind of weird for me. It's kind of funny too. It's such an interesting title, just relationships, right? And when I first heard this, I was like, whoa, we're going in a new direction. Like, it's going to be a super practical message about, you know, dealing with relationships, having relationships in marriage. Like, what does this mean? And then as I listen to the Sunday message, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. My mind is in the wrong spot. You know, I've been been listening to all these podcasts on relationships and stuff. And I was like, oh, relationships, it's going to go in this direction, right? And then I realized, like, uh, wait a second, this is a sermon. This is definitely not going to be the direction of these podcasts on relationships that I've been listening to, but this is definitely about God instead. So I was kind of like, I tricked myself because uh, I've been watching those different, listening to these different podcasts on relationships, and I'm like, oh, okay, this makes a little bit more sense. So uh, super happy about that. But yeah, and, and a little bit a little bit sad that it's not about resolving or having how to have good relationships with each other uh, or relationships with marriage and stuff like that too. But yeah, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, over here in uh, Malaysia, Chinese New Year is officially over. So thankful because uh, all the fireworks and all the noise and people selling. You know what they did yesterday? I forget what the name is called for the last. It's supposed to be Valentine's Day for Hokkien people. Right, so Hokkien people were the people I was talking about last week, where they were like blowing fireworks off on like the eighth day, whatever it was. But uh, uh, it's supposed to be a day. What happens is you have a tangerine and you put your name and your phone number on it and you throw it in the river, and then the girls pick up or the girls or the guys pick up these uh, tangerines and they call them, and that's you know like that's like the the Valentine's Day for Hokkien people, the Chinese people over here. And I was just like, that is so crazy how people really try to find lo- find love. Now, here's the thing that's kind of crazy. I bet you that doing it this way, by throwing these tangerines into the river, you would probably get better results for marriage in the way that we do it today. You know, where people just try to find it on their own, going by looks or whatever it is, or by their social media profile. Whatever it is, I bet you the, the, the results would be even better doing it that way rather than doing it with tangerines rather than doing it the way that we do today with a 50% you know, divorce rate. So... Uh, yesterday, uh, well, on Saturday night, uh, I had some friends come over. Uh, friends, I I knew some, I knew two of them, but the, another one was a new friend that I just met. These are not members, but they're friends. They came over to my friend's house, and we had like this a Chinese New Year party. We ate together. We played, uh, we played like this mahjong step. You know those those games. You know you play, you gamble for like you know like for like 50 cents, 25 cents or whatever it is. But it was really, really fun, right? So they came over. We had a lot of fun together just playing Mahjong, Rummy. And uh, like uh, one of the the friends brought over two dogs. So we had three dogs in this apartment and they were peeing and pooing everywhere because they're all nervous and stuff. But it was really, really cute. Uh, But also I I had this really interesting, funny conversation with a friend because we're talking about how much, you know, we really don't know. And we really don't know the future. We don't know what the right answer is. And this is why we pray and we ask God. But when it comes to like real important things in life, uh, isn't it, uh, we just found it so funny how, how, like how, 
we ask God to confirm some revelation in a super ridiculous way to prove that God is talking to us, that it's something is true. You know what I mean? Like I talked about my time is like, um, I was like, God, if this, you know, I think it was a time when I was moving to LA. I was like, God, is this really the right thing for me to move to LA? This one, I was in uh, university. Should I move to LA? And if it's true, let birds fly by my window, right? And then what happens is birds fly by my window. I'm like, oh, Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, like the like the thinking man, like this reasonable man, uh, this conscience comes in and says, come on. It's just, you know, the birds fly around all the time. So what, you know, what do most of us do? We're like, do it again, God. <laughs> We're like, let them, let them fly by again. And my friend was telling me that his time was like, uh, um, he was praying about something. He's looking into the sky and he's like, God, Jesus, if this is true, then let, let me see a shooting star. And then, pew, a shooting star in the sky. Like, tell me that's crazy. That's like so impossible to happen. But it's, it'd be quite funny because all of us, we'd be like, is that really true? Like, even, it's so crazy that we ask for something so ridiculous and then God shows us something that's that ridiculous. And then even when we get the sign to prove that we, you know, that this is the right thing to do, we're like, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it kind of funny? Just just the way our minds work. Like we ask for something ridiculous, and then we're like, and then when the ridiculous things happen, thing happens, and it's like it's so not supposed to happen. And then when it happens, we ask for God to do it again. And then you know we're kind of stuck in that place. We're like, man, this is how much we like how ridiculous our minds are, and how much you know we really, really are like confused with ourselves so when i was looking at that i was like oh that's quite interesting how how we how we do this also so uh it, for me it was just a fun conversation it reminded me of my old days where you know i just asked for stupid things and then it happens and i then i ask god again and again and again to prove it and i still won't believe it so yeah that's that's something that i was thinking about um remember tomorrow is february 7th which means we're going to be a week away from um so it seems next trial. So we got to keep that in mind. And that's going to be probably the media tomorrow. We'll talk about that also. So make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. Um, the new poll came out. New poll is going to be on how long does it take to recover spiritually from a vacation, right? So like for me, I just got off 21 days with my parents. It was really relaxing and fun. But of course, relaxing and fun means it's so comfortable. When it's so comfortable, you sleep a lot. And you spend a lot of time, you know, doing lots of nothing things. You're not like really working because it's a vacation. So uh, my question to you is how long does it take for you to recover spiritually from a vacation? What do you guys think about that? And I think that's something that we should all think about and look at and say, yeah, how long does it really take? Uh, for you guys personally speaking, some people take a week, some people take three days, a one day, whatever it is. Some people take a month. Some people like never fully recover, right? So, uh, I, you know, I just want to see what you guys, because I know a lot of people in Asia, uh, now that Chinese New Year is officially over, uh, probably are going to be uh, uh, you're probably going to have this this Chinese New Year hangover, and it's hard to get back into your spiritual thinking, right? Your spiritual like habits and way of life. So you know, just tell me how long it, it takes you guys for you to recover spiritually from like a nice long vacation, like Chinese New Year, going out, you know, a real vacation, going to another country or something else like that. So that'd be kind of cool to hear. Um, today, let's get into some channel comments. Got some funny channel comments this week too, but I got a couple of cool ones also. Uh, first one I'm going to have is from Hyungmi over there in Korea. And she says, thanks for the info. And this was on uh, how to relieve yourself of stress. And she says, breathing helps that much to get rid of stress. And it's kind of a question because she doesn't believe it. But that's why I feel happier these days because I breathe a lot when working out. Thank you. Thank you, God. I can breathe and live today. Uh, Kat over there in Houston says, wow, your testimony as a cooking teacher. Now, this is for the prayer podcast. Your testimony as a cooking teacher is so inspiring. Truly can see how inspiring the Trinity, Lord, and man of mission is teaching us. Uh, gain so much from this podcast. Uh, another one is from Christy. And nice and short, but it was something that I was looking for was sermons in the sky really hit my heart. And that's something that I, I was really hoping that God would speak to people's hearts there. Kimberly said, so grateful for your podcast, Pastor Sky. Since the start of this year, it's become a part of my morning commute. Listening to the pre dawn Proverbs plus your podcast gives me a lot of strength to get through the day and to do it together with the Trinity. I enjoyed the Health is Happiness segment this week. I work in cardio-oncology research where we treat patients with coexisting heart disease and cancer. 
I manage a clinical trial that may help delay heart valve deterioration or extension of cancer for patients with carcinoid syndrome and carcinoid heart disease. Super cool stuff. I'm still new to the team, so getting acquainted with reading results for EKGs, echoes, and cardiac labs. So that's really cool. And that's um, awesome that you got that job, Kimberly. Uh, Angel says, yes, the daily world news uh, definitely helps to keep me more informed about what to pray for. Thank you. Kimberly also had this really funny one. And it, it, it started like a, it started a, what do you call it? It started a thread. So she said, I'm always skipping the sports section every time. Maybe when I get a husband, I'll care more. And then Kat says, girl, me. And then Kim says, I knew it. I wasn't the only, it wasn't only me. So I thought that was a really, really funny thread that, that came out of that one there too. So guys, you know. Go ahead, keep writing the stuff, guys. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing, what's what's going on over there too. Hopefully, you guys uh, keep commenting. We'd love to uh, share more of these funny comments and, and, and moving comments and inspiring ones too. Uh, for those guys out there who want some Providence clothing, we do have a Provi clothing uh, shop uh, and uh, the... The website is on uh, the description below in both SoundCloud and YouTube. So go ahead and check that one out too. Uh, also, big shout outs for those of you guys supporting us financially. I'm just so grateful and thankful that you guys are out there uh, you're recognizing the hard work and also just uh, showing that you guys are really supporting and caring for these channels. Big shout outs to Jade in Australia, uh, Cinda in Canada, and Lerong in Australia. Super grateful and thankful for your support on Patreon, for believing and supporting this channel. You guys are amazing, and this is what keeps it running constantly. So um, all you guys out there, too, we're still at the beginning of the year. If you want to support us, too, we're on our next uh, run to get some more support for this Patreon channel. So check out the Patreon link in the description. If you're on SoundCloud, click the blue button on the homepage. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that you can support the Morning Star Drive at just $3 a month. So at the moment, uh, lots of stuff to check out. Uh, a lot of people are now revising and, and doing their lecture notes again. So you guys, guys can do lecture training on your own on that site. And there's a lot of Bible study there. So go ahead and check it out, right? Uh, so let's move on to some member music from around the world. And um, let's get into today's featured artist of the day. And today I'm going to do like a, a Japan. I don't know why I'm inspired by Japan. So I'm going to do a Japanese Monday for these uh, featured art uh, for basically these member artists. We we'll start off with AG from Japan. And she has, he, oh, man, he's got this great, he's doing techno house dance, uh, EDM, all these different types of music, taking prominent songs and changing them into those styles. And I love this version of memories that that's going to be featured artist of the day. And then we have Tecmo Plus also from Japan with Diamond. And then we'll end things off with Kumachang. We all know him on this Japanese. Monday uh, with the song Open My Eyes. <music>
was Open My Eyes, and that's Kumachang from Japan. Before that, Tecmo Plus, one of the new uh, artists that we found over there in Japan uh, with the song Diamond. I really like that song, and honestly, it really reminds me of BTS songs. I'm not sure about you guys. That song, Diamond, reminds me of BTS. Uh, before that, AG from Japan, uh, featured artist of the day, and that song is Memories. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. So let's get into some news going on around the world. And yes, uh, as brides of this history, we really need to be responsible for all... Um, responsible for the world by praying for the world uh, and repenting on behalf of the world too. But we we really, really need to know what's going on. So I hope just like Angel has responded that a lot of you guys out there are listening to the world news so that we can understand it in a much better and deeper way. All right. So let's first start off with uh, what's going on over there with the U.S. and China as uh, the U.S. shoots down an airship over the Atlantic. Now, the U.S. has shot down a giant Chinese balloon that it says has been spying on key military sites across America. The Department of Defense confirmed its fighter jets brought down the balloon over U.S. territorial waters. China's foreign ministry later expressed strong dissatisfaction and protest against the U.S.'s use of force to attack civilian unmanned aircraft. Footage on U.S. TV uh, networks showed the balloon falling to the sea after a small explosion. An F-22 jet fighter engaged the high-altitude balloon with one missile, an AIM-9X Sidewinder, and it went down about six nautical miles off the U.S. coast at around 2.39 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, defense officials told U.S. media the debris landed uh, in about 14, in 14 meters of water, shallower than they had expected, near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and the military is now trying to uh, recover debris, which has spread over seven miles. Two naval ships, including one with a heavy crane for recovery, are in the area. And in a Pentagon statement, a senior U.S. defense official said that while we took all necessary steps to protect against the PRC surveillance balloon's collection of sensitive information, the surveillance balloon's overflight of U.S. territory was of intelligence value to us. And U.S. President Joe Biden has been under pressure to shoot the balloon down since defense officials first announced they were tracking it on Thursday. Now, after the balloon was shot down, Biden said they successfully took it down and he said he wanted to compliment all the aviators who did it. And in a statement a few hours later, the Chinese foreign ministry said the Chinese side has repeatedly informed the U.S. side after verification that the airship is for civilian use and entered the U.S. due to force majeure or it was completely by accident. The discovery of the balloon set off a diplomatic crisis with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken immediately calling off this weekend's trip to China over the irresponsible act. The Chinese authorities have denied it is a spying aircraft and instead said it was a weather ship blown astray. Now, groundwork for the operation was laid when the U.S. Uh, FAA briefly paused all civilian flights at three airports uh, around the South Carolina coast on Saturday afternoon because of a national security effort. And the Coast Guard also advised mariners to leave the area due to military operations that present a significant hazard. So... It's not getting any better right now, so let's really pray for uh, not just what's going on in Russia and the Ukraine, but we got to pray for all the different things going on everywhere, all right? So there's a big one right there. Um, now let's move on to Russia and the Ukraine, as there's a big prisoner swap uh, as the battle for Bakhmut rages. So Russia says 63 Russian soldiers were released, while Ukrainian authorities say 116 of their servicemen have been freed amid continued fighting in the east. Ukraine has released dozens of Russian soldiers as part of a negotiation brokered by the, U the UAE. Russia's defense ministry has said the same day 116 Ukrainian servicemen were also freed as fighting rages in the eastern city of Bakhmut. Uh, basically, it was really complicated negotiations, and it resulted in 63 Russian servicemen returned from the Ukraine territory. Uh, the ministry said on Saturday, as quoted by TASS news agency, and it added that people of a sensitive category were also included in the deal thanks to the mediation of the Gulf country. Now, the ministry did not provide details on who falls within the sensitive group, but experts say that in past exchanges, it referred to a wide range of people, including spies, civilians, holding sensitive information. Now, all of the released soldiers are currently in Russia, the ministry said, adding that they were being given medical aid and access to contact their families. The UAE maintains close ties with Moscow and remains one of the countries not supporting Western sanctions against, the, uh, against Russia. And last October, President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan and Russian President Putin met in St. Petersburg, where the Russian leader described relations between the two countries as an important factor of stability. Now, while the Russian ministry did not refer to the event as a prisoner exchange in its comments on Saturday, later the same day, Ukraine's presidency confirmed the release of 116 Ukrainians, including fighters caught in the Battle of Mariupol and Kurzin. 
the coordination headquarters for the treatment of prisoners of war, posted a message on his Telegram channel saying that the liberation came as part of an operation that took place in several stages. So a majority of 87 of those freed were from the Ukrainian regular armed forces. 18 servicemen were from military intelligence, while others belonged to the Navy and the National Guards. So at least 23 of the released were injured or sick. Uh, the Ukrainian official said, adding that some have lost limbs due to frostbite. Uh, the coordination headquarters also said that the rep repatriation of the bodies of British volunteers Andrew Bagshaw and Christopher Perry took place as part of the operation, and prisoners exchanges between the two countries have become more regular in recent months. In a surprise move in September, more than 300 soldiers were swapped, marking the largest exchange since Moscow's invasion last February. Two more took place in December, and the latest in January saw Ukraine and Russia freeing at least 50 prisoners each. So the release of prisoners on both sides comes as intense fighting continues around Bakhmut in the eastern Donetsk region. And Moscow says Russian forces are encircling the city from several directions and battling to take control of a road that is also an important supply route for Ukrainian forces. So that is quite interesting. And very, very interestingly, I was listening to a podcast on Russia and the Ukraine. And they said that if you look at every single war that started with Russia, uh, the first year is basically not a – First, the first year, everything looks the same where Russia is about to lose. They fire a bunch of generals. Uh, but they said that the one thing that Russia has uh, over like Ukraine and many of the countries is they have a huge standing army, which means that it's, it later just turns into the battle of attrition. And that's normal for every war that Russia has been in. It looks really bad the first year. Then after that, they just are crushing because they just have too many people. And imagine if you're a small country – and if you fight them off and you feel this great morale, but then as time goes on, they keep coming, never stopping. They said this first year is just the beginning. And they said they're going to keep sending soldiers more and more. So uh, that should be quite interesting to see uh, what's going to actually happen there. Last but not least, let's go into Israel as Palestinians are wounded after Israeli forces raid camp in the West Bank. So at least 13 Palestinians have been injured after Israeli forces raided the Akbat, the Akbat Jabber refugee camp to arrest 10 people. At least 13 Palestinians have been injured, two of them seriously, after Israeli forces fired bullets, missile, and tear gas during a raid of the Akbat Jabber refugee camp in Jericho City in the occupied West Bank, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. The Israeli forces uh, fired an anti-tank guided missile uh, during the raid to arrest Palestinians, Israeli radio confirmed, and the Palestinian Red Crescent Society accused Israel of blocking access to ambulances, and they were eventually allowed to treat the wounded after the operation ended. Uh, there were reports from the West Bank city of Ramallah uh, that the uh, that five hour the five hour raid was a continuation of the incident from the last uh, from last Saturday in Jenin near Jericho, and you know of course Jericho is a city of about thirty seven thousand people, so it's really really small. It has been essentially closed off by the Israeli military for a week as Israeli forces hunted for suspects in a drive by shooting near an illegal Israeli settlement not far from Jericho, and. The Israeli forces have arrested 10 people, which among them, uh, people understand, were the suspects wanted for that shooting. And Saturday's raid comes a week after Israeli forces killed nine Palestinians in Jenin refugee camp, uh, the largest military raid on the camp in the northern occupied West Bank since 20, uh, 2002. And this comes really as part of a very violent beginning of the year in the occupied West Bank. Uh, and so far, 36 Palestinians have been killed so far. Uh, Akbat Jabber, one of 19 Palestinian refugee camps in the occupied West Bank, is home to more than 8,000 people. And the United Nations Refugee Agency says people there have inadequate shelter and sewage facilities. And the recent surge in killings by Israeli forces comes as part of intensified nightly raids, particularly in the northern occupied cities of Jenin and Nablus, under the banner of crushing limited Palestinian armed resistance against Israeli occupation. Now, civilians confronting Israeli forces during raids and innocent bystanders have been killed, as well as Palestinian fighters in targeted assassinations and during armed clashes. And last week, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced plans to, yes, we heard this, arm Israelis with guns amid escalating violence in the occupied Palestinian territory. And that came in the wake of uh, killing of seven Israelis by a Palestinian in occupied East Jerusalem. So uh, it's it's... We don't know where this is going, but we know uh, that it's going to be really, really serious. And I hope it's something that all of us will really be able to uh, grasp and get our hearts and our minds to think about very carefully. Uh, we got to pray for this. We don't want war, right? We really, really don't want war anywhere. And we need to pray and repent uh, for all these different things that are going on. 
Uh, so into the sports news, which uh, Kimberly does not like, and neither does a cat, apparently. And I'm sure there's more of you out there that don't listen to the sports. But we're going to start off with the NBA. LeBron James closes in on the NBA record as the Lakers, Lakers lose to the Pelicans. LeBron James is only 36 points away from breaking the NBA career scoring record in the LA Lakers. 131-126 loss to the New Orleans Pelicans on Saturday night. Uh, their next game is going to be uh, against the Dallas. Uh, no, no. Who's it going to be against? I think they're going to play. Uh, are they going to? Who are they playing next? It says that. Well, I'm not sure, but they're going to be. Oh, they're playing uh, OKC. They're playing OKC uh, tomorrow, and it's at home. So it'd be nice, you know. And he scored 36, 37 points before. So let's hopefully he can do it at a home game. That would be quite awesome to see too. Uh, and also, there's the big uh, Kyrie Irving sweepstakes as he requests for a trade before the February 13th deadline. And so far in the hunt is the uh, LA Lakers, Dallas Mavericks, Phoenix Suns, and also the LA Clippers. Right, who are also in the trade market for a point guard. So a possible deal is going to happen. There's mutual interest, but especially his preferred destination seems like it's going to be late, uh, to the Lakers to go back with LeBron James. But let's see what happens here. In MMA news, Conor McGregor back in the news as he's going to be joining uh, as a coach for the tough, uh, what do you call that? What do you call this? Uh, the tough championship. So... What's going to happen is uh, Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler will be on the next season's The Ultimate Fighter before uh, facing him in the octagon. So UFC President Dana White announced McGregor and Chandler as the coaches on social media Saturday. No date or location was announced for the McGregor-Chandler fight, which will likely take place at 170 pounds. McGregor, who coached on the reality series in 2015 against Uriah, uh, Uriah Faber, has not competed since breaking his leg uh, in a fight with Dustin Poirier. In July 2021, and Chandler has been calling for a fight with McGregor for more than a year. So that's going to be quite awesome to see. Last but not least, in some soccer news, Manchester United win versus Crystal Palace uh, as Rashford continues scoring uh, his scoring form. 2-1 win over Crystal Palace d uh, despite playing the last 20 minutes with 10 men after Casemiro was sent off. Early penalty from Bruno Fernandes and another Marcus Rash Rashford goal had United cruising at 2-0 before Casemiro was... Uh, was shown a red red card for violent conduct, and um, eventually they won two to one. Uh, also, you had the Liverpool losing. Liverpool lost. Who did they lose to? They lost to like a really really bad team, right? They lost to uh, Wolverhampton, which is relegation threatened. Another disappointing, humiliating loss, right? And I don't understand how this happened, but it means it means that Liverpool have only secured one win in seven games in all competitions since the turn of the year. Uh, Arsenal also falls to Everton 1-0. Uh, they haven't lost a Premier League, Premier League game since a 3-2 defeat at Manchester United in September, but they failed to match Everton. Uh, and now, I believe, they're going to be like three or five points away from Man City, who just won the other day too. So let's see what happens there. And there it is, guys. That is the top three news in sports and top three news around the world. Hope it's something that uh, you guys really enjoy. But you know what that means. It is the golden time. <laughs> Yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with, The Lord is my hope and joy, and then my life goes on with you, and we'll break things down with, Though you don't say a word. So, as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. Tell someone, tell them of my love. 
About the spring, the summer, fall, and winter. I wanna be with you from Monday to Sunday. My life goes on with you. I'll be with you forever. I love you. Like the sun that is always in the sky. You are here, always constant by my side. Even though everything in this world may change, but you never change. Oh, your heart is true. It is steadfast, and your love is so. You're an eternal And I feel in my heart Just the same as you do So I'll never change And now all that I want Is to do all these things for you I will sing every day Songs of love, songs of thanks From my heart Now no matter Whether I was right or whether I was wrong, you always like me more than any other. And regardless of the time that passes, we have never let go of each other. You always looked at me, no other. Whenever, whenever, you always stayed with me forever. I walk the path with you together. Life's a gift we've been given. Keep on smiling and be happy. This life is beautiful, so keep rejoicing, keep on loving. Throughout the spring, your summer, fall, and winter, I wanna be with you from Monday to Sunday. My life goes on with you, I'll be with you forever, I love you. I like you just because of who you are, and I know I am blessed to have met you. So I give thanks and love endlessly, I rejoice sharing all of my heart. I will sing every day, songs of love, songs of thanks from my heart.
Keep on smiling and be happy. This life is beautiful, so keep rejoicing. Keep on loving throughout the spring and summer, fall and winter. I wanna be with you from Monday to Sunday. My life goes on with you. I'll be with you forever. I love you.
And that was Though You Don't Say a Word. Before that, my life goes on with you. And of course, the Lord is my hope and joy. All right, so now that our hearts are made, uh, have been made ready through the time of praise and worship, I hope you guys really enjoyed that time too. You know, you can leave a comment below uh, if you have any requests for some uh, praise songs that you'd like to hear also. Uh, but let's get into today's word study. And of course, the word study is on the Sunday message. And a lot of uh, the title of Relationships. Right, And there's like three main key points that come out of there. Like the first one is God works by raising the level in each time period. The second key point was God gives the authority of love as much as you love him. And last is he does not give the same mission as he has, which, you know, which makes a lot of sense too. Uh, it, it was a very interesting message because it does uh, separate and gives a lot more clarity on the mission, right? The man of mission, Jesus and, and the, the Holy Trinity. And I, I think it's good because it, it, it's not something new, to be honest, right? For, for, for when I listened to it, it's like, oh, okay, I knew this already. Like, you know, we already heard the Holy Son lesson that there is the original entity that's part of the Trinity, which means they are the one with ultimate authority and power. And in the, long, in, in the big picture, it is the Holy Trinity that is the bridegroom and we are the brides. And that includes the people, like even the Messiah on the earth. Right. So what happens is, remember, from heaven's perspective, it's 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 like the large picture is the Holy Trinity is the bridegroom and every human being, including Jesus, is a bride. Right. And then coming from the human perspective, because we can't see God, uh, the one that God sends is symbolically in the position of the bridegroom, symbolically. Right. And that's why we get into the to the realization that, you know, especially this week's message is guess what? Yes, he is uh, the person that is united with God and they are on the same level of love as God, but not the same authority and not the same mission, right? And I, I hope that it doesn't confuse a lot of people because it's not, it's actually not saying anything different than we've learned from the past, right? A lot of people might come into some assumptions and say that, well, it's saying that, oh, is it, so then what we've been believing is not true. No, it's it's completely not saying that. Also, um, you, in order for us to, you know, you have to realize this very, very, like, understand context, situation, and look at exactly what it says and not reading into what it doesn't say, right? It doesn't say this is, you know, everything that you've learned from this point on has, has, is false. It's not saying that at all, right? So we're first getting just the, uh, understanding the, uh, the separation between the Holy Trinity and the people of mission. Right now, is Jesus a man of mission? Absolutely. When he came, he was the physical body, right? So, but since he's the physical body, what does that mean? That he is the one that the Holy Trinity, the Holy Son, uses on this earth. Okay, so we know that for sure, and we have no problem with that. Yes, he is a human being. He is the Messiah. He is a savior. Okay. So when it happens again, remember, Jesus no longer, long, no longer has a body, but now he, he's only in spirit, so he becomes divine, right? So what happens is after he, he dies, his body goes away, then his spirit is a divine spirit, okay? So now Jesus comes back again uh, with the Holy Son. Now, Jesus, remember, is a human being born on the earth. He is the Holy Son on the earth while he was on the earth, right? And you know, he wasn't the one that existed before creation. So Jesus is a symbol of God on the earth. He is the visible God. That's what the, the, the man of mission is, right? The symbol of God on the earth, the visible God. So that's something that hasn't changed. And he has absolute power. He is the Messiah, okay? So here's the thing. Now we get into the separation of Jesus and the man of mission. And that's something that's very, very similar. Because remember, Jesus was once a man, but then he became a divine spirit. Right, all the things he did on the earth. Now he's a divine spirit. All right. So what happens is Jesus comes back in the second coming, and him and the Holy Son come together because you know we we know the scriptures tell us that in Acts chapter one verse nine through eleven that the, Jesus will come back in the same way, which means he comes back in spirit with the Holy Son. All right. So when that happens, what happens next? Uh, then we're going to see that uh, they choose a body, and that body becomes uh, the the symbol of God. Right. And will that body have the same authority as Jesus and the Holy Son? Absolutely not, right? Jesus died. He's now only in spirit, is a divine spirit, right? There's transformation. And now he is at that level and he's the one that's coming down, 
right? To work with the man of mission. Mission. Now, what does that mean? It means that once again, we have to get to the key point is equal in the position of love, but not in the same of authority, right? Because Jesus is the one teaching, teaching something, right? So Jesus is above because he's teaching something. He's teaching something. How, oh, this is what it is. This is what it is. This is, what's, uh, this is what the word is actually saying. So the separation is the authority and power of uh, authority and power of the original being is always higher than the one that they are teaching. Right? No student is above their master. All right. Now, so remember, position of love is the same, but authority and power is not. So it's just like a CEO. The CEO comes down and marries someone, and that woman becomes higher in position because she's married to the CEO. However, she is not the CEO herself, right? So that's how you have to look at it in that way. So the, remember, the position of Jesus and the Holy Son is different. So they're coming back to start the new history again, and they find the man of mission, and they train that person. So the Jesus and the Holy Son are at one level, and the man of mission, who is a human being, who has a body, is much different. Of course, when he dies, there's no body, and becomes divine, right? But as long as he has a body, he is, you know, he's of flesh. So just as we are the brides of this history, we do not receive, uh, we only receive the authority of love from God, but we don't receive the same mission or the same power, right? So that would be the same thing as like when Sunsim teaches us, it doesn't mean that if he's a leader, right, then we're going to be the ones that receive the same authority of love and we become brides too, like he is. However, however, we don't receive the same mission, Right? So remember, this is only talking about splitting the mission itself. When Jesus comes a second time, his mission is different than Sunsi's mission, completely different missions, right? And this is why Sunsi uh, is learning from Jesus. So what is, what, is, what is the point of it? It's just saying there's a separation, there's a difference between the two missions. The moment people start to insinuate or to assume is the moment we begin to make a lot of mistakes because that's when misunderstandings happen. Is like going, oh my gosh, is, is this what the message is saying? No. Guys, how many of us were here during the time of 2008, 2009, during the trial and stuff like that too? Ex almost the exact same messages came out, right? Making sure that everyone is clear, right? So remember, in the New Testament, if you believe in Jesus, you hold the authority of sons of God, which means you're a son of God just like Jesus is, but you don't hold the same authority of Jesus, right? So take that into mind where in this time too, Jesus comes back in spirit with the Holy Son, uses the body of the man of mission, right? And what happens is in the, it's the exact same thing. In the New Testament time, Holy Son comes down, but just because he, uh, the Holy Son teaches Jesus and uses the body of Jesus doesn't mean that Jesus is all of a sudden the level of the Holy Son. Their mission is not the same. Now, when Jesus comes back, he comes back in a different position, right? So he's no longer the person who's the man of mission on the earth, but he's now coming from the heavens. So remember, the position changes now. It's not exactly this. We're not looking. We're, it's apples and oranges now. So Jesus comes back in spirit with the Holy Son, uses a new body of the man of mission, right? Which means that it is not the same uh, is going to be, well, sorry, one more sec. It's going to be the same authority of love, but not going to be the same position, right? It's not going to be the same position. So you need to understand is when Jesus is the Messiah, he's the savior of the earth, right? And then he goes and goes, uh, he dies, his body dies, and then his spirit becomes divine, goes up into heaven, and then he comes down with a new mission, right? He's coming down to uh, start the Lord's second coming history using a new man of mission, right? So remember, the man of mission received Jesus, but does not have the same mission of Jesus. Okay, what does that mean? Right? You got to think about what the mission of Jesus was. Uh, not thinking about the, the mission he has when he was on the earth as a man of mission. We're thinking about when he comes back again. He's got a mission where he's the one coming as uh, the heavenly sim symbolism of the heavens coming down from the heavens to teach the new man of mission. Right? He is the counterpart of love. He receives authority of love, but... Uh, be very clear, he doesn't have the same mission as God. Remember, as God's position. And Jesus and the Holy Son come down with as the symbol of God, God's position, right? So even if you've, uh, and, and the way Sunsi put it is perfect. Like, can anyone take the mission of God? Absolutely not. No one could handle it. Like an ant trying to hold a boulder, right? So the authority of love, right? The authority of love uh, comes to that person, 
right? And it come, of course, it comes as much as you love him. So if you love him like a, a, a bride, then you'll have the authority of love as a bride. If it's a son, then you have authority of love as a son. And God gives the equal position of love. Remember, not the position of authority and power, but of love as much as we love him. Not the power and authority of his mission. All right? So remember, this, this message is just telling us the difference in relationships. So even to the Savior that God sent to the world, he doesn't give the Savior the entire mission of God. He just gets the mission of the Savior. Right? It's because the Savior is a person. And remember, the human being, if you have a body as a human being, you are not an absolute being, so you cannot give that mission of God to that person, right? Remember, Jesus is not part of the absolute trinity. He's not given the same authority as God. And this is why, you know, if you think about this, one of the best points is, if he did have that absolute authority, then how could you kill him? How can you persecute him? Right? It, would, it just couldn't happen that way. Right? It, it just would have been absolute destruction. Jesus would have done. So remember, Jesus is the Messiah sent by God. And we have to believe in him, receive him to get out of the domain of death to light and receive salvation in the, in the, uh, in the new time period. Right? So in the same way, too, we're believing through the man of mission. Right? So when you believe through the man of mission, you have to think about how you believed in the time of uh, 2,000 years ago. How did you believe in God? By believing in the one he sent, right? Remember, that is the greatest mission we have. What is, the, what is the greatest work you can do? The greatest work you can do is to believe in the one that God sent, right? And now there is a new person that God has sent and you believe in Jesus through the person that God sends, right? So you just need to understand the principles and the core reasonings behind it, right? Nothing has changed. And this is where people are going to get confused. Like, oh my gosh, what's happening here? Why has it changed here? Why has it changed here? Does this mean that this, oh, does this mean we've, has, has the direction of providence changed? And the answer is no, it hasn't. Right? And we're just seeing, we're, we're, we're on the same path. We're just in a different direction in that same path. So it's not like a complete direction change. Like we were going straight and now we're going left. Is we've always been going straight, but this path has many different paths inside that one large path, and there's going to be different things that happen all the time. And 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 it, it, a best way, the best way for us to look at it is understanding that even when early the early Christian church was going on, there was many different directional changes. From no longer saying you are a Christian because you'd be killed. From having services out in the open to having services uh, in, you know, in the catacombs. In the beginning, guess what happened, guys? Right? I talked about this last week when I was talking about the book of Chronicles. Was it Chronicles or which book, or which book was I talking about? Uh, but I was, I was, was it, what, what book was it? Was it the book of Acts, right? But in the early Christian church, Christi like uh, Christians who were believers in Jesus were still going to the synagogues and worshiping in the synagogues because we believed in the exact same book. And that's why uh, Jews still considered us to be Jews. Like, because there's a lot of Jews in the Christian church and they believed in the same book. So there's a big shift. Think about that shift where they were, they were still going to the Sanhedrin, still listening to the preachers, still believing the same book, same still going to the temples. And then there's another shift where it's like, oh, all of a sudden we're not going to the temples. We're not going to the Sanhedrin anymore. So then, you know, you have to think to yourself is, wait, has the whole direction of Christianity changed because we're not, we're no longer going to the Jewish uh, Sanhedrins anymore? And the answer is no. It's just that inside, as we progress, we move directions more and more step by step. We are not in the final stage of how providence should look. We're still in the beginning stages and we're going to still going to be making changes along the way, Right. And it's going to be, and as people who are reasonable and rational beings, we look at the context of the situation and circumstance. Why? Because situation and circumstance does make a difference. It does make changes. When the Romans were killing Christians, what happened to Christians? They went underground. It's a directional change. They're still worshiping God, still in the same path, still evangelizing, but it was done very secretly. Very secretly. Right? When it came to a time when the emperor hated Christians, all the Christians moved out. Even the Jews moved out of Rome. They had no choice. They didn't say, no, no, we believe that God is this, so we're going to stay in Rome because it's the central. No. There's a lot of this that happened, right? So uh, the, the, the one thing you don't want to do is uh, never have a knee-jerk reaction. 
Knee-jerk reaction means instant response to something you just heard. Oh, is this what it's saying? Do not have a knee-jerk response. That is the worst way to handle anything. The best thing is you listen to it, it's like, oh, what does that mean? Oh, that's quite interesting. Oh, uh, oh what, is this what it's saying? Go back to your principles. Go back to what we've learned in the past. Go back to if we've seen this before, and we have in 2007, 2008, 2009, we have seen these shifts and changes because of the situation and circumstance, right? And it doesn't mean we're all of a sudden changing and we're wrong. And that's something that you guys have to think about very, very carefully. Reasonable, rational, do not have knee-jerk responses, do not have an emotional response, but just wait on it for a little bit. Understand it. You're going to hear the message come out again. And even from what I've listened to, I can see how people can misunderstand the message, but it's probably because you have a knee-jerk reaction. You're not listening to it properly. And that's something that you we have to start thinking about much more carefully too. All right? So that's something that I do think because a lot of people started texting me and started asking me these questions about the Sunday message. But I want you guys to think about it reasonably, rationally, not knee-jerk reactions, but listen to it in a very, very positive or uh, I would say in an unbiased way. It's like, oh, I wonder what this means. I wonder why it happened. There's a reason, rhyme and reason for all things. There's a situation, circumstance for all things to happen. Okay? So there it is, guys. That is the word study for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. It's something that I really uh, I really like to do, these word studies. And, and I hope it's something that all of us can uh, understand even more deeply. Okay? So uh, let's get into today's uh, song of choice. And I'm getting into this gospel and Christian music a lot too because there's a lot of these songs that just hit my heart to what is going on right now. And um, those of you guys who don't know, CC Winans, uh, husband and wife, BB and CC Winans, they are awesome from the old gospel music and they have just they're just amazing amazing believers in God and singers so I'm going to go back to CC Winans and she has a brand new song that came out and it's not like brand brand new but it's a recent song and it's called Goodness of God and it's basically going through her entire life of how good God has been to her and I hope it makes you realize the same for you so everyone please welcome CC Winans with Goodness of God Your 
what an amazing song. That is C.C. Winans, uh, one of the OGs when it comes to gospel singers. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. That is Goodness of God. If you watch that music video for her too, it's really inspiring. It just goes through her entire life where she was growing up, meeting her husband, her children, her grandchildren, and just an amazing... Uh, what she's done for uh, Christianity too is amazing. So no scandals and stuff like that also, but she's just done. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed that song and you were moved and inspired by it too. All right. So let's get into our uh, final segment for today. And of course, every single Monday, we have two G talks with Eddie Kwan over there in San Francisco. And uh, today he's going to talk about a visit from a friend and also about an article he read comparing millennials to Gen Z and also about using things that seem like a handicap as a strength instead. So everyone, here is Eddie Kwan from San Francisco who's currently in Hawaii with 2G Talks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another week's episode of 2G Talks. I'm so very excited to talk to you guys once again and to really check in with everyone. Uh, this is something that I've been wanting to do. We've had a really an amazing week here in Hawaii, and I'm so grateful for everything that the Lord's given. Uh, it's, it's not because everything was positive, but you know, like it, it, I learned a lot throughout this last week too. Uh, we had a member visiting here from the New York Church uh, for his birthday, and so we got to spend a lot of great time together together with the members and I think the one of the biggest takeaways for me from the last week was like seeing it once again through someone else's eyes because you know so far I've been here for a little bit over two months now and in that time I've definitely experienced a lot and there you know like you just there's just something different from experiencing something for the first time versus you know for the for second and time uh, and, and onwards so we did stuff with him that we've done already before but so once again having someone who uh, who is experiencing for the first time gave us another impression once again like to kind of really value it again you know looking at that from that perspective uh, and so we had a really amazing time uh, and it was quite different uh, because while he was here, the weather was really different. The situation was different. And, you know, uh, the way that we think is so different, too, right? Like him being from New York, like all the guys were sharing different things. Because, uh, you know, all the guys here are, are from Hawaii. Uh, and I'm from San Francisco. So we're all sharing these different perspectives. And even with the regular actions that we're taking, they kind of had different sort of underpinnings uh, in how we were acting and how we thought. Uh, so it's really great to be able to see that difference because for me, um, as someone who's gotten to travel a lot over the last few years, uh, really seeing how people are different, uh, actually, it, it lends to a sort of strength that we have, you know, as as people uh, and even as a species too. Uh, and really, I've wanted to learn from each person this sort of way. And I think this is really a great benefit that we have in Providence uh, that we uh, that we run in such a global uh, and a widespread scale. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today too, well, like the benefits that we have from running in Providence like this. Like I think, you know, one thing I've seen from everyone, uh, regardless of where they're from, is so many people, it's, they... And this is me included, everyone and everyone does this uh, regardless of where they're from. But man, so many people believe that the grass is greener on the, the other side, right? They believe that, you know, like there's some negatives to the situation that they're in or the place that they're in. Uh, and that can happen, you know, with the physical place that you're in uh, or the circumstances you're in, you know, with like with your occupation or with your church or with your mission or with uh, your community or with your family, like people, you know, uh, for one reason or another, or from one cause or another, will find some negative thing to say about their situation. Uh, and then, you know, that's not a bad thing, you know, cause at times you do, it, the things that you are facing are frustrating. Uh, but by the same token, even with that same thing, it can kind of become a strength in your life, right? It can something be something that you actually benefit from uh, instead of just be being something that, you know, uh, is causing you distress. Uh, and one of the examples I, I, I have is uh, I was reading this article this last week about uh, comparing millennials with Gen Z. And this is kind of a topic that I've been kind of interested in, you know, because I'm running together with the SS, but not just that too, but even for myself, I'm kind of like, 
in that borderline, that transition between millennial and Gen Z. And so I see within my friends and within myself, some of our qualities are more like millennials and some of our qualities are more like Gen Z too. Uh, and so like really trying to understand that that difference uh, specifically has been interesting. So one of the things that in the article that I was reading was this person writing, it was saying like, uh, I've, I've been, he was saying that he's been taking all this data from uh, like these different articles and resources that he was looking at. But for him, he hasn't specifically gone through the actual act of interacting with Gen Z because he's not old enough to have kids yet. Uh, I don't know if he's single or not. And he doesn't work in an occupation where he's actually directly dealing with Gen Z. So he doesn't have any direct experience with them. And so he's taking this all based off of like research that, you know, he has performed and that other people have performed too. Uh, and so that was one thing that really made me think uh, of, of from that whole article that for me running as a, the national SS department, that one of the strengths that I have is that I'm actually connected connected to the younger generation uh, with the younger folks and with uh, being able to understand some of their struggles and what they're going through on a daily basis. And it, it and you know, and it's contrasted with the times where maybe if I'm not taking care of them uh, actively or doing something uh, like where I'm interacting with them, then yeah, like it's easy to uh, to forget or to not understand what is exactly that they're going through. So one of the, you know, like, uh, like and so going back to the thing with like our circumstances our situations the the place that we're in even our occupations how it might seem like it's a detriment to ourselves sometimes like taking care of the ss is it's so busy and there's so many things and um it's a big responsibility too and so at times i'm like oh man like this is so difficult uh and you know like so i'm trying to fine tune like how i can do that whilst uh, all uh, at the same time uh, doing the, all the things that I need to do as well. But then that article really made me think like, wow, like, so I actually have this huge benefit from interacting with the SS in this sort of way. Uh, and really trying to specifically understand uh, how they're different. It has been very interesting as well. Like, it's crazy to think about, like, one of the things that the article was talking about was uh, how um, the iPhone has now celebrated its 15 year uh, birthday or its anniversary. And so these Gen Z kids who are teenagers now, they don't know a time before smartphones. And I'm sure this is kind of like a thought that people have had before. Uh, and you, you might have even talked about it at one point or maybe even recently too. But that's so crazy, right? That like the kids nowadays, they don't know a time before smartphones. And like so many of the people that I've been talking to, like adults in, or par in particular, admit that even they are so distracted by their phones and they spend so much time on it. And maybe this is something that relates to you too. But one thing that we've seen is like, if there's downtime in between doing something, then we instinctively reach over for our phone. Right? Even when we're like walking somewhere or going somewhere, when we're doing some sort of menial task, we instinctively think about, oh, like, Maybe I can do something on my phone during this time. Like maybe I can listen to something. Or maybe I can watch something. Or maybe I can do something to fill this time that I have. Uh, and that's kind of become an instinct for us too. Uh, but I think we've also gained a lot of experience. Like all of us have gained a lot of experience about what that kind of thing can lead to. Sure, it can lead to you, to you using that time beneficially. But at the same time, it can be very mentally draining too. And there's so many different uh, psychological things and metaphysical things even, right, that can happen from that kind of life. Uh, like one of the things that the article mentioned that I've seen is that even with these uh, Gen Z kids who don't know a time before phones, they're obsessed with their phones. But many of them, like uh, in surveys, have admitted that they believe that their phone is a detriment to their mental health. So that's kind of a shocking thing, that they recognize that it's such a a harmful thing in, in certain ways, but they're like so dependent on it, right? And so that was kind of like a, a shocking thing that, you know, I've been really trying to think about clearly because it's so true because even adults are, are, are affected like this, but at least even up until my time, we remember, like we remember living through a part of our lives where phones weren't this prevalent, right? It wasn't this big of a part of our lives. Uh, and like, you know, like <laughs> I was talking to one of the blessed family here. And he was like, yeah, like back in the day, you could sit there bored. Like we would 
live like sometimes just being bored and like you know in, in some cases you kind of need that like you need to be able to sit there uh and to use time like it's kind of like testing your patience almost like where you don't instinctively feel the need to fill it with something right away but because of, of all the information that we have at our fingertips with our phones and with our computers and with all the different sources that we have uh you know if we we there's not a moment right where we just sit there doing nothing uh, and so, yeah, this is kind of like an interesting thing for today. And so all of things considered, like tying back to the first thing, I really want, you know, uh, to be able to use all of the conditions of our lives, even the negative things, to our uh, our triumph and to our success. And I really be believe and I hope that all of Providence can do the same too. Uh, and so all of our members at home, I really want to encourage you guys. And one of the reasons why I brought up the S is like, okay, uh, Right now, there's so many things that I have to do myself too. So it's hard to actively plan and run and organize things for the SS at all times. But at the barest minimum, one of the things I want to do is continue to talk with the SS and manage them through conversation uh, and to learn from them as well about, you know, specifically things that they're going through uh, in their lives at school and what they think about the world. Uh, because all of this helps give me a source of information that, like I said, that the person who wrote the article who doesn't have his own kids, who doesn't interact with, you know, the, the younger generation has. And so I actually want to use that for, you know, my own benefit and for everyone's benefit too. Uh, and so, you know, like before I was like, oh man, it's so hard to take all this time to take care of the SS, but I'm kind of changing the, the, the mindset behind it. It's like, oh, okay. So I'm using this as an opportunity for my life. Uh, and so I really hope that everyone can kind of look, look, you know, look across your situation, like look across, like whether it's with your family or whether it's with the, the, you know, your work or whether it's with your community, whether it's with your church or with your department or with your mission or even a difficulty that you're going through. Uh, and then maybe there's a way to convert that into a, a, a resource for you, into a strength for you, into a benefit for you and any of those kinds of things. Uh, if there's something in your life that, you know, that kind of reminds you of, feel free to leave a comment below. And I would love to hear uh, maybe your thoughts on this matter, too. I really hope that everyone has a great week, uh, just as I had together with the member who is visiting. And in connecting like this all together globally, uh, that we can really gain that sort of same sense that we did, that I did from interacting with this member from New York, uh, who is so different from us in certain ways, but who is so similar to us in our love for the Lord and our love for each other. Uh, and really, uh, that's one of the, the, the biggest blessings of this platform. And so I really thank the Trinity and also with Pastor Sky for all the work that he's done. And for all of you, uh, the listeners and uh, all of you, the believers uh, that are, you know, uh, not just listening, but are supporting us through prayer and through, uh, you know, even just taking action on your own. Uh, all of that contributes to this history and it contributes to what we're doing too. Uh, so I really look forward to engaging with everyone, both through this platform and through all the other means that we'll have in the future. Like, I would love to meet each one of you guys in person uh, and to talk about the various things that interest you uh, and that have led you to believe in this history. So I thank you guys and I'll catch you guys on another week's episode of 2G Talks. And thank you so much, Eddie, for another wonderful episode. And, you know, I, I'd love for you guys to keep keep uh, encouraging him and keep writing uh, uh, your comments to him, too. He's just doing an amazing job. And he got a lot of good realizations just from his everyday life. And that's one of the things I really, really like about this podcast is I'm able to share daily realizations, talks that I've had with people. And it becomes more of a real podcast rather than... Uh, trying to come up with a script or like a topic that's like, you know, oh, this is a topic that everyone's been talking about. You know how, how we have to do that on YouTube instead. But uh, super grateful and thankful for all the work Eddie's done. It's like episode 66 already. So he's, he's well into over a year, doing an amazing job, and I hope that he continues to do this too. All right? So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's awesome podcast, Monday podcast. Hope you guys have an amazing first day of the week, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. <laughs> It's the morning star drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like Zone, you know, I'm on the morning star drive.
drive